The cool thing about having a LED totem is everyone lets you kind of move up to the front when they see the totem and they kind of part the sea to let you go wherever you want to walk. Uh, and that's how we were able to get such good access to the front of stage at so many events. So if for anything, for any reason, I'd make a totem just for that. Uh, as you'll notice, we made a base for the disco ball. We took a two liter uh, bottle, spray painted it black, cut off the top, um, and the cap was a little bit small, but we enlarged it to fit through our, our birch rod that we had made. Uh, it kind of gives a good platform for that disco ball to sit on. Uh, the tricky part is how you attach your um, LED lights, or the string lights, to uh, the bottle itself. Um, you have plastic with some spray paint on it. It's not the most adhesive friendly surface. Uh, we tried, uh, well I initially thought that um, a hot glue gun would be perfect, right? Melted plastic on plastic would be great. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, it doesn't set very quickly. A plastic bottle is actually too thin to be able to handle the hot, um, the hot plastic. And it actually just like, melts into these weird puddles. And so what we had to do was use little pieces of double-sided sticky tape that I had laying around uh, the warehouse and eventually use that double-sided sticky tape in random places uh, to get everything to stick. And even then, things barely held on. So, you know, there might have been a better method. Um, we didn't really figure it out. After about maybe three days, three days, four days of usage, for sure when we took it to Burning Man, um, the LED rope lights started to come apart and there wasn't much we can do about it besides uh, clean it a bit and add more double-sided tape. So, you live and you learn. The end of the bottle cap was smaller than the one inch, the one inch diameter of the birch rod. So I took some tin snips and I cut into four sections that bottle opening where the cap goes. And by doing that, I was able to kind of make a pressured sleeve, uh, and that helped me to get the birch rod through, uh, as well as provide some of that pressure uh, that is needed to hold it in place. Pretty simple solution, um, and it w didn't look too terrible. Now that I have the LED strips kind of mounted to the, the pop bottle, uh, I'm getting the disco ball placed so that I can get the second half of the LED ropes kind of up the disco ball as well as mount the disco ball uh, permanently. Uh, on the bottom I used, I think, plumber's tape. Um, it is a, a metal band that tightens with a screwdriver. Uh, that's to hold the bottom in one place. And because the disco ball is on top, we kind of relied on gravity as well as some hot glue placed uh, around the rim uh, to keep everything in place, and that worked pretty well. Then we made some final adjustments to how, the, I guess, the curvature of the aluminum rod, and we decided to make it a little bit more kind of oval shaped. Um, if anything else. You could have done a number of things. Uh, with aluminum rod it's pretty malleable so we just tried to keep it uniform knowing that when it got transported and kind of kicked around that it was going to bend in weird places. Uh, the last thing we had to do was get all our wiring uh, completed now that it was on the LED strip. So those four extra strips that I used for the center um, disco ball section um, I didn't actually have those completely wired together yet, so I'm putting all the reds together, whites together, and the greens together uh, to make like a small loom, uh, and that way I can extend those down to the Arduino board and the battery that's going to sit near the bottom where the first set of LED strips ended, uh, where you can see the bottom where all those wires are. That's where the extension needs to go. The battery I'm using for this is a Anchor 1300 milliamp uh, rechargeable bat battery. And the Arduino is a five volt system, so it works perfectly fine. Now with this many LED strips, um, eight in total, about 60 LEDs each, um, 
It lasted for about 12 hours on a single charge going all night long. We also found out that the, uh, the sensitivity of the analog mic was a little too much. And so we actually put rubber cement over it to deaden um, the sound um, because the concert was so loud. Uh, and that helped to reset kind of its sensitivity. If I had another chance to do it again, I would use a PWM to be able to manually change the sensitivity, and that would be probably ideal. Either way, it was a great project. Glad you guys followed along. Please like, subscribe, do the notification thing if you found this entertaining, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.